So this is a vegan grain bowl. I'll show you the packaging for that. And then some asiago artichoke dip on salad and hummus underneath the veggies for dipping. A little bit of lobster claw. And James has requested um, more onions and garlic on the menu. So I'm going to review the Garfield movie, The Marsh King's Daughter, If and Just Like That, the complete second season. And this is the packaging from the grain bowl. Um, after our hike, we have started going to the grocery store if, the, if, if it's still open when we get in. And so at around 9 o'clock I was at the grocery store and I got these because, well, after a big hike I don't want to be cooking and this was already made. So, 30% off, $4.44 each. And regular price, wow, $8 each. I can't mm. imagine spending $8 for that. But people spend a lot on going to restaurants, so maybe they would. But, I mean, I bought a big container of spring greens, lettuce, the, the mm. salad there, for um, just this... $4.99 minus the 30%, so roughly the same price. I don't know why um, people would buy those, but I have to say the, that green bowl is delicious, don't you think? Oh, I, that's what I had this morning. <laughs> well, you had the salad this morning. You had the bag of... Oh, so which bowl? Uh, that's that, the green bowl. That's this thing. I heard green bowl. Oh, uh, it's no. been a long cup, a day and a half for me. Yeah. 20, it was a long time. 27.9 kilometers yeah. return trip. The, it's funny because the sign said, um, <laughs> when we looked at the sign at Lost Lake, we were like, what? We hiked 40 kilometers. This is a 40 kilometer hike today. Yeah, so it, it said 19.6 yeah. to trailhead. And yeah. it kind of felt like that because we were going up over a long distance. It was yeah. only. I believe, uh, let me see, 10.1 plus uh, 3.8, what does that give you? 13.9 kilometers. That's a big difference. It kind of cut into some of the stuff that I'd planned to do. Because I was going, well, I do, I'm sure it's not that, but maybe... maybe, maybe no, I'm walking. glad we didn't go up yesterday to that. Like, James wanted to go to the west side of the lake and there's a I guess there's mm -mm. a viewpoint and stuff what? East side of the lake. East side of the lake. Weren't we on the east side of the lake? We were on kind of like the north side of the lake. We came in from the north. We just touched. Okay. We just uh, touched the northernmost point. Okay. Well I'm so if you think about it there's this. huge cliffs over to our right hand side, that's the west. That's the boundary with B C. Mm -hmm. And over on the other side, so you say the lake flows into Blackiston Creek, which kind of well, it basically goes over that nice falls, right? To Blackiston mm -hmm. Falls. But I'm glad I tried this because I I never would have bought it for like the regular price of eight dollars. That just seems insane for no. that much food. But um, it is delicious. And That's where I started out. With it does this. seem pretty healthy. Like I looked at the ingredients here, and like I didn't make it. Like it's supposed to be made for a microwave, right? It comes in a little bowl and stuff, which is really handy if you're at work or whatever, and um, or if you've just completed a long hike and, and you're hurting. Um, but I mean, I wasn't hurting so much that I couldn't walk around Superstore. So, I mean, deep down, I guess I knew that couldn't have possibly been 40 kilometers that we did. Um, so anyway, what um, it was return trip was twenty seven point nine kilometers. Yeah, but the, it would look better. Like um, you'll notice, there's some brown and stuff on James. That's because I cooked it in the frying pan with the onions and garlic, so it kind of got that caramelization from the onions brown from the pan on the. The bowl also, so it, it actually is a, a very beautiful uh, grain bowl. And but I mean, I was very thankful for when I went there because I got the grapes for so cheap, and I got um, 
big tub of hummus. They, I didn't know they sold big tubs like that. Did you show the people? Hum, you probably told them. Yeah, that there was. Yeah, there's a whole lot of hummus there. Yeah. yeah so that's a good, Sounds like good a healthy rock and roll meal. Sounds Whole lot of hummus. <laughs> but yeah, the big tubs of hummus. They were uh, four dollars and forty-four cents each on sale, and then minus thirty percent off coupon. And I didn't even know they sold hummus tubs that big. So I don't know. It must have been a good sale. What even did before you say it was? Yeah. 444 for did you see the size of those tubs yeah. they were massive yeah that's good yeah hummus i think like, it's pretty honestly healthy. i couldn't even make hummus for that price because mm. the the price of the tahini yeah. right so i that was a, a good buy but i mean when i get things like this then i know i could make it healthier than like if i was going to make it myself it wouldn't have like um cheap oils and stuff uh, whatever anyway but out of all of the things that I got I am most um, pleased with having bought the the spring mix the greens the salad green because big tub like that for that cheap that's awesome and so I don't feel badly about that but anyway um, if you're this was the only vegan one that they had. Um, they and they didn't have any vegetarian bowls. It was either chicken. There were a few different chicken flavors, and then there was that. So that's what I got. And um, honestly, if they went on sale for that price again, and I'm and it's summer, so I'm hiking, I would get them for that price. Because it is expensive, but I mean, there's good stuff in there, quinoa and whatever it is. I can even taste the quinoa. <laughs> he doesn't quinoa. like it that much. <laughs> no, but, I like it pretty good. Um, I used to get it all the time when I was yeah, buying bulk nuts. And stuff. Oh yeah, you'd eat it just I'd plain. I'd get all sorts of yeah. grains. And he'd put, he'd make his own cereal with yeah. everything. But he'd go to nuts the bulk and dried fruit. And Anyway. The dried fruit doesn't necessarily come recommended because no, they it's, it's put so crystallized sweet. sugar in yeah. or whatever. But uh, nuts come recommended. Anyway, the Garfield movie got top of the stack, and I wouldn't have expected that it would. I gotta say, I was surprised. I almost smothered my tongue when I saw top of the stack. I know, Terrible. but it was entertaining. Mm. I especially liked the parts with, like, they, they really paid attention to details here. I mean, the animation was excellent. Mm. It looks just like, like Garfield. Garfield should look. Yeah. It's I perfect. like the way his eyes go like this when yeah. he's just kind of bored and mad. Yeah. And, um,. I've known I'm, dogs like this, like mm -hmm. Odie too. Different yeah. kind of eyes. And they really made um, made you love John and Odie, and maybe not hate Garfield so much, but yeah. you're kind of annoyed with him anyway. I used to know a, a relative of mine used to own a Garfield-like cat, and. Uh, you know, he, once he got tired of you petting him, he, then he'd bite you or scratch you. Yeah. <laughs> like, enough, yeah. go away. <laughs> Too lazy yeah, to get up and go himself. Yeah. It was amazing. But anyway, um, yeah, Odie, the little dog, he's like um, Garfield's servant. But, uh, and he's a nice guy. You, you love Odie. You watch it and you just mm -hmm. like oh, a sweet little guy. And honestly, I don't know though if there was. I feel like there's. Like. Um, Hollywood is putting messages into shows to try to, you know, just behind the scenes a little bit, but not very much behind the scenes so that you see it. I mean, they had Chris Pratt and. Must have been the guy's voice first for Garfield because I mean he gets top here after oh, yeah. and then um, you can recognize Samuel L. Jackson's voice for um, Garfield's father and so <laughs> that sounds funny I like Samuel L. Jackson I gotta say yeah who doesn't everyone loves him 
But anyway, um, in this movie, I'm, I'm watching and I'm like, okay, so uh, Garfield's dad is, for the longest time you see him as, well, he wasn't really a great father. He abandoned his, his son. And John, being such a nice guy, He's um, taken on the responsibility of raising Garfield, right? And he's uh, and Garfield is not an easy person to raise. He's um, John he's must Garfield. be working very hard to feed him. And um, anyway, so uh, so I kind of got the feeling that they were trying to. Um, make a race issue out of it and I hope not mm. but about um, people like John being good for um, paying the bills and whatever to raise the children of people who uh, may not do, do so <laughs> I don't know but maybe I'm wrong I don't know um, but then there was like the evil cat villain was uh, a Persian uh, who was uh, from England. Right? Oh, and she I'm, was. I thought it was a Persian from Iran. Or something oh, like oh no, that would be that would make more sense—a Persian cat from Persia. But um, no, it, uh, she was from England. Yeah. So yeah, that would have been a very. Um, Politically incorrect. Incorrect race. Although, race. <laughs> you know. But uh, honestly, isn't making uh, John raise the uh, anyway? That seems kind of politically incorrect to me. Um, but maybe not. I, d I don't know. It just seemed kind of weird. It was just kind of. Well, that's the way it's working out in uh, places like Europe and Canada. Yeah, and to a certain extent in the United States. Yeah. But anyway. Give us your tired and poor and they'll support them for the rest of their lives. I know, but then that made me think, okay, well, who's going to be watching the Garfield movie? Probably. I don't know. Um, well, honestly, anybody. I mean, doesn't there ever... I don't know. I used to like Garfield when I was a little kid, yeah. and my dad was not impressed because he thought that Garfield had, um, you know, bad, was a bad influence somehow, like it, because he, he believed in capitalism, and he with the most toys wins, and he was very, um... Yeah, that's an awesome quote, isn't it? I'm glad you remember it. Malcolm Forbes, or one of the Forbes that he so anyway, whatever. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of weird. It's uh, very entertaining. The I, I can't imagine anybody wouldn't like it. It was a really great family movie. I, it's funny because. Um, James was reading a quote out of a book recently. He was saying somebody was rating Crip Lake or advertising Crip Lake Trail as a great family trail, and it's I'm like I'm not going to what? say who it was, but <laughs> I'm sure I read that somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Not only nope. is it is that trail rated difficult, but it's there's some seriously dangerous parts on that that yeah. you would not want to bring your family on. Like, um, really many adults should be wary of that trail absolutely so so people are older am i being hypocritical no but this is a great when i was turned 68 i wasn't going up that the last part of that trail mm -hmm. i'm not mucking around it. no and don't feel like you're missing out what you see a mountain lake you can see like mm -hmm. loads of mountain lakes in many at, ways in Waterton. so the whatever scenery is better on the way up, you get to see. Yeah. If you get far enough on the switchbacks, you see, then you go on Hell Roaring Creek yep. detour. Mm -hmm. You get to see four pretty impressive falls. But now that they have a great ladder for mm -hmm. Crypt, it's mm -hmm. actually, I think a lot of people could 
do the tunnel. So if you can handle the the rock ledge is actually pretty scary getting to That's the ladder. That's the worst part of it. You're but about to, the if only you person can't I've handle seen that, go back. Go, not using, like leaning up against the cliff. Oh, when on the, mm-hmm. people lean against the cliff. I'm sure I did. See, the thing so. is, is the 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 rock ledge. It's there's really not much chance that you're going to fall off this way unless your your balance is really off or something because oh. the ledge actually leans into the which is, doesn't come with every ledge. Yeah, like you get on the eastern side of. Um, Avian Ridge. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> lean in. Some so, leans out, some, yeah. in, some even. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, as far as ledges go, that one's actually a pretty decent ledge, you know. Yeah. But um, it's been a long time. Uh, yeah, you know, I can recall it being, thinking it was actually wider than I expected it to be. It was the first person I saw coming back on it. His legs were shaking. Yeah. It looked as though he was just going to. Yeah. And I swear, I saw two people coming back just before you this time out one was crawling part of it. wow well you got to do what you, you got to do, do what you have yeah? to do but honestly I, I'm not don't go them, you know? somewhere Man. unless you're very sure you can get back there so if you're already feeling scared yeah. on the ledge going Up. don't go that's the important thing coming going back down is, is always the yeah. hardest psychologically not just physically because you're looking down yeah. at uh at what could uh, swallow you, or envelop you, or whatever. Anyway, so the Marsh King's daughter. This is excellent. It's a great movie. There was only one part that bothered me a bit, so it didn't make it to the top of the stack. Uh, but um, and that was, I mean, the the woman. She's uh, the Marsh King's daughter. She's um, phoned a police officer and she's concerned that, she, I mean, she believes that her father, who's escaped from prison um, and presumed to be dead, uh, is not actually dead. She believed that he was at her, her place and she'd set up traps and, and so she phoned a police officer who really should have cared about her. So it wasn't just any police officer, it was somebody who was very close to her and knew her and um, told her, look, you know, this, uh, or she told him that she, she thought he was, he was there and he didn't, you know, send in people to look at things or anything, right? He didn't, he was just like, oh, you know, I think you need to let him go and da, 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 da. It's like, whoa, no, you, when somebody is concerned about something, you look into it. So that, irresponsible doctor. Yeah. So that, that bothered me, that part, because it seemed to make sense to me this this woman she's not irrational she's a very sensible sort of woman and if she's uh, if she believes this is the case take her seriously and I think anybody would so honestly I think any police officer would have taken somebody seriously in her position so for somebody closer to her than a a, just a a regular police officer that doesn't know her at all or whatever um, to not take her seriously I thought that was a real failing for this movie anyway but aside from that I I really enjoyed the movie it's a you have some beautiful scenery for the wilderness and um, it's I mean there's it says it's a tense thriller and there there are some scenes that might be like this isn't a family movie this there's some scenes that uh, um, like uh, there's one where a uh, an animal gets shot and stuff like that and there's one where uh, there's an animal in a trap and whatever so there's some disturbing scenes um, but it's still a great movie if now this one had um, Ryan Reynolds in it I like Ryan Reynolds yeah I think everyone does yeah, it's pretty and it also had John Krasinski the guy the from uh, yeah, The Office the silly guy in the okay there were some silly guys yeah we all silly um, uh, well I can't remember his name from that anymore it's been a long time since we watched the office what did the you one that he was the one the love interest 
Oh, like the tall guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like him. He's fun. Yeah, so there's people in this that you'll like. And um, there is a child act actor, and she does a decent job. So it's not a bad movie. I just yeah. don't think they had a whole lot to work with here. Ryan Reynolds is kind of working uh, against type then. He's a sweeter kind of guy. Like he's kind of sweet, but he's he always has an ironic thing to say about something. Right? Yeah, honestly, I, I don't know that he was a great fit for this movie. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, but um, I mean, you're still going to love him because you always love him. Yeah. But anyway. He kind of says what you always want to say, and he says it so sweetly, you know. Yeah. But there's one point where he's, um, his character, <coughs> there were the character he put, <coughs> is hiding under a child's bed, and I'm reminded of that clown hiding under the bed thing that, um, so that, I was like, oh my gosh, this does not work. And then by the end of the movie, though, you're like, oh, okay, but then why was he hiding? But anyway, there, it's a kid's movie, whatever. And like just it. like that, Sex in the City. Oh, is not as good. <laughs> anyway, it's it's not. I was listening to I, that in the background. Um, it just struck me as being so unrealistic. I couldn't believe it. I know. It. I wow. know. It's terrible. Like these people, the uh, Carrie and and her friends. They're supposed to be around 56 years old, I guess. And it's like, one, I don't believe that they're 56. And so. Uh, they have children that are in high school and whatever. Well, Carrie doesn't, but uh, some of the other characters do. And um, so it's, it's one of the teenage boys made a list of milfs, and a couple of the characters in this were on it. And I was thinking more like gilfs, you know, like honestly. Um, That's hilarious. But anyway. Um, just like that, Sex in the City decides to be more multicultural. Just like that, um, Sex in the City decides to have uh, open up the range of sex um, pre sexual preferences or whatever. It's uh, and just like that, the show is. They threw in some worse. people of color too. There's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, There's no, yeah. like it's not just the regular friend gang. They brought in. They wanted to have you know more color and more diversity of you know not just um, of ethnicities but uh, gender. Yeah, gender. And just like that, it it seems really forced. It seems like they just they're like oh what are we gonna do to make this relevant and for today and edgy or whatever oh we'll put more like graphic sex scenes in like all the time and we'll have this and it just seems really contrived so um just like that doesn't work for me really and honestly i wasn't a big fan of sex in the city but once i started watching it i thought okay but uh with this with just like that, it's when women become menopausal, it's not about sex anymore. That's younger women. So this this show just totally misses the mark. It's a, just like that. When you're menopausal, you discover new ha hobbies other than sex because you don't have a sex drive anymore. And like they're talking about, um, Carrie's supposed to be advertising some sort of um, vaginal freshener or something. Oh, is that an awful show? Thing. What was that about? <laughs> and it's, you know what? You never need a vaginal freshener if you're not using it for sex anymore. And if you are menopausal and you have no sex drive and you're, I mean, you have you have no reason to be having sex you can't get pregnant and you have no sex drive so why are you having sex <laughs> i don't know it's um anyway it's it just totally it it does nothing for me this show is not 
Not good. They could have made it so it focuses more on the kids, like if they want to have teenage, some of the kids, and some older women do have, they've adopted children, whatever, and these women are wealthy in New York, and so sure, yeah, maybe they have um, teenage children, but they Is that Queen Latifah? No, just it's not. Uh, it's not at all, and it's not a look-alike. She doesn't look anything like her. Uh, it's just a, a It doesn't a picture. look like her. No, on, it's just there you were looking at a very small picture. Mm -hmm. no. But, anyway. No, yeah, it's funny. We haven't seen her in things lately. Maybe hooray, she's hooray. been out of fashion. I don't yeah. Well, I didn't mind seeing her. So. I didn't mind, but I didn't like her. Okay. Wasn't she? Didn't she start off like a rapper? Or yeah. Like, yeah. Whatever. I don't. Know. Anyway, um, I I do find the costumes that Carrie wears and some of the other wear, people wear uh, kind of amusing because they're oftentimes ridiculous or hideous. Some <laughs> sometimes it like especially Carrie, she doesn't even match. It's just like she'll wear this pink glittery purse with like a what looks like a ratty old t-shirt which i'm sure is designer but it looks hideous right and so who's um, carrie is that the sarah or sally sarah Jessica Jessica Parker. Parker. Yeah, that's what's, you know, so sally's not that far off it's actually short for sarah anyway, oh okay well anyway um so some of the outfits are amusing to watch is that actual outfit she's that wearing is, there? yes but oh, it's i don't remember seeing it in the show yeah, it's the wrong color for her you know like yeah. it did was it Oh, she doesn't okay. seem to n know what mm -hmm. colors, or her whoever is managing her costumes doesn't seem to know which colors she should wear, yeah. or maybe they maybe think it's a joke character. too. I, I don't, don't know, yeah. because yeah, her her costumes are ridiculous a lot of the time, yeah. quite hideous. But anything you want to talk about? I don't know, uh, not really. No, just getting tired of the political political correct stuff. So there's a couple of black women there. What is she at Espanol? No Espanol? no, she just wears a wig so that her hair is straight. How about her Espanol or? I don't know. Um, see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two out of seven, that's over you know, like uh, black people are thirteen percent of the American population. Well not twenty six. Mm. Well, whatever. I I don't care well, about that. I mean, they could have there. they could have the the three main characters. Um, I mean, they don't have Samantha in very much. They had a little thing with her on the phone with. But anyway, because um, she's living somewhere else, so she's not in the show. I don't know why she didn't want to do the show, but anyway, I wouldn't care if it was just the three regular ones and fifty. Um, black people or whatever but well, the point of it is why are they why why are they making it more di diverse and all that I just don't it has nothing to do with reality sure no, I mean if uh, whatever. someone's hanging out uh, in uh, it just feels in the N forced. NBA you know like there's going to be way more black uh, folks or African-American folks stuff like that mm -hmm. NFL whatever 